turn your Bibles to the 17th book of the New Testament, the book of Titus. And in our reading and thinking together, we are going to go to the second chapter. And we're going to start at the first verse. Titus, the second chapter, starting at the first verse. And I'm going to come out today from the New King James Version. Once again, Titus, the second chapter, starting at the first verse. And when you get it, say amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. The Word of God says, But as for you, speak. Somebody say speak. Speak. The things which are proper for sound doctrine. Mm -hmm. Look at your neighbor and say sound doctrine. Sound, sound doctrine. doctrine. You're going to hear that word a lot. Here in the next hour. Amen. That the older men be sober, reverent, temperate, sound in faith, in love, in patience. The older women likewise, that they be reverent in behavior, not slanderers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things. Mm -hmm that they admonish the young women, are you listening, older women? Yes. That they admonish the young women to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, homemakers, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be blasphemed. Likewise, exhort the young men to be sober-minded in all things, say all things, all things, showing yourself to be a pattern of good works, mm. in doctrine, showing integrity, reverence, incorruptibility, sound speech that cannot be condemned. That one who is an opponent may be ashamed, having nothing evil to say of you. Thank you, Jesus. Now, turn your Bibles to 2 Timothy, the first chapter and 13th verse. 2 Timothy, the first chapter, 13th verse. When you get it, say amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. In 2 Timothy, the first chapter, 13 verse, God's word says, Hold fast. Somebody say, hold fast. Hold fast. The pattern of sound words which you have heard from me. Mm -hmm. Who do we hear it from? Me. Say Jesus. 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 Mm -hmm. In faith, and love which are in Christ Jesus. Hold <coughs> fast. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Today I just want to talk to you. And I thank God how he gives me these titles. And I want to talk to you on what a healthy body should look like mm -hmm. when on a sound doctrine diet. Mm -hmm. A sound doctrine diet. If you look at the screen here, you will see that, and you know, praise God, he just blesses me with the ability to go through and find these pictures here, but I had to take their medical words out and put spiritual words in here. Amen. But you see where, right there, sound speech. What's coming out of the mouth? Jesus. Jesus. Sound speech, a mouth that speaks his truth. Mm -hmm. Then you look in the mind of the, what's in the mind? Jesus. Jesus. Sound doctrine, a mind that thinks his way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, then you look at the heart. What's in the heart? Jesus. Jesus. Sound faith, a heart that beats with his life. Mm -hmm. So you have a mind that thinks his way, a mouth that speaks his truth, mm -hmm. 
and a heart that beats with his life. Thank you, Jesus. That is a healthy body right there. Amen. I'm talking spiritually. Yes, sir. And if it's that healthy spiritually, mm -hmm. guess what it's going to be materially, naturally, and human? Mm -hmm. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. you know, going to the doctor for a checkup is something that I guess we all should do at times. And I've even thought of myself having to go there, especially lately after coming down with this crud twice. And that last time was a very humbling experience. <laughs> but I can tell you that the whole time, Jesus was not far from me. Amen. Even running to the bathroom having to give up something. I'm praising the Lord. Amen. Uh -huh. See, you got to understand, even in the midst of your sickness, Amen. that's really when you need to be praising yeah. Almighty God. That's right. Not just when things are all going, you know, fine and hunky-dory and all this other stuff, but in the midst of your trial. Yes. In the midst of your tribulation, yes. we ought to be saying Jesus. Jesus. Now, you know, the reason why we want to go to the doctor at times is because there's some things medically that we just can't detect mm -hmm. about our bodies. Mm -hmm. And see, you know, likewise, we are prone to miss some signs of poor spiritual health in our bodies as well. Mm -hmm. And there's none other better to go to for that checkup than the ultimate doctor on high. I'm talking about Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Now, Amen. In, in the Apostle Paul's letters to pastors Timothy and Titus, he uses a word that helps evaluate our spiritual health. Mm -hmm. And that word is the word sound. And we get our English word hygiene from this Greek word sound. And if you want to know the definition of hygiene, it is the science of health. It's promotion and preservation. Mm -hmm. So when the Bible speaks of sound doctrine, it's talking about sound faith. Mm -hmm. It's talking about sound speech. But most of all, it's talking about sound doctrine. Because that's where our spiritual health will come from. Yeah. And if you have this sound, then you will have a healthy doctrine. Mm -hmm. You will have a healthy faith. And you will also have a healthy speech. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, so how do we maintain a good spiritual hygiene mm -hmm. to where we don't stink in the nostrils of God? Did you hear that? <laughs> How do we maintain a good spiritual hygiene? How do we know if we are spiritually well? Well, these are very important questions on several different planes, but it brings up another important question. How do I know if I am truly spiritual since there are so many different claims of spirituality out here in today's society? Well, the Word of God tells us in 1 John, the fourth chapter, first verse, it says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone into, out into the world. And you know, when I, when I read this, I said, oh, wow, Lord, I know there's only one Holy Spirit. Uh -huh. But there must be a lot of demonic spirits out there for us to have to do this testing and evaluation. And you know what God says in 2 Corinthians 11 and 14, and, and you know, I, I want you to read this with me. Everybody read this so you can, you, you can just get an understanding because it says, And no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of life. So you got to give him a test. In verse 15, what verse 15 he says, Therefore, it is no great thing, read it with me, if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. So if you got the devil transforming himself into a minister of light, this, this shouldn't surprise you that those who choose to follow him will also try to transform themselves into an angel of light. Yeah. Smiling on the outside. Uh -huh. Just as dirty, stanky, and filthy on the inside. That's what I said, stanky. Because you know, it don't smell good to God when you're sitting here trying to be false with somebody. Oh, glory to God. Just bear with me here for a moment. But you know, and then I, I say, well, Lord, this one spirit, your spirit, how do we know if 
we truly have your Holy Spirit on the inside. Uh -huh. Well, John 14 and 26 tells us, and I want you to read this with me also. John 14 and 26, it says, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, who's the Helper? Y'all just read it now. Come on, stay with me now. It says, Who the Father will send in my name. Hold on. Test question. What's his name? Jesus. All right, you all passed. He says, He will what? Teach you how many things? All things. All things. And bring to your remembrance how many things? All things. That what? I said to you. So if there's a spirit out there that's bringing you something that you know that you know did not come from God's word, uh -huh. that ain't, I said ain't, uh -huh. the Holy Spirit. Did you hear me? Now, how are you going to know what sound doctrine is if you ain't taking the time to open up this sound doctrine and read it for yourself? Now, look, I can give you so much on Sunday. Now, I'm limited because of time. At women's study, you can only get so much in just an hour or two. In men's study, which is only supposed to go an hour, but we be having such a good time, we'll bring up the roosters up in there if we have to. But what I'm saying is, how will you know what sound doctrine is if you will not read it for yourself? And stop letting the devil convince you that you will never understand what God's word says. That's his biggest tactic. I can't understand it. I'm not a scholar. I'm not this. You are created by the same God that I'm created by. Amen. You have the same brain in your head that I have in my head. Yes, if I can understand it, so can you. And you know where we get our understanding from? The helper, the comforter, uh -huh. the counselor, yes, the Holy Spirit. And if he is saying everything that Jesus has said to us, guess what? We will understand. Amen. Amen. So don't walk out of here today. I can't understand. Well, that's the biggest lie. We can sit there and pick up any other book and read any other book. Paperback books, love novels, all that. We can cook books. Now I know. Now look, look, look. Now I can sit there and go. I can't understand a cookbook. <laughs> I'll burn water if you let me, but don't worry about that. I know that if the Holy Spirit is on the inside and teaching me what I need to do, mm -hmm. I don't have no fear Amen. of even cooking. Mm -hmm. yes. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. But now, we're talking spiritual here. Amen. Amen. We're talking spiritual. Thank you, my wife will be at home with her apron and gloves waiting on me when I get up. All right, Holy Spirit, man. There you go. Come on, I was only just using an example. You know? Okay, now. I want us to be healthy. Thank you, Jesus. Now, number one, the first diagnostic test of good spiritual health, health is our relationship to one sound doctrine. Now you know, I, I now you know. I, I know Mother Yvonne. She said, "I want, I want you to preach on stewardship. I want you to preach on discipleship." <laughs> but understand, church, I can't come to you about stewardship or discipleship unless you have an understanding okay. that you can't be a good steward, mm -hmm. you can't be a good disciple mm -hmm. if you're not standing on sound doctrine. Amen. Amen. You see, sound doctrine is the foundation. If our spiritual health is going to be as good as it can be, we have to be having it based on the right. Information. Mm -hmm. The right information. Yes, Lord. See, now consider what God's word says about sound or healthy doctrine. From our lead text today, Titus, the second chapter, first verse, it says, But as for you, speak the things which are proper for sound doctrine. Right? Mm -hmm. And then in 2 Timothy 1.13, we're reminded that he says, Hold fast the pattern of sound words which you have heard from me in faith and love, which are in who? Christ, Christ Jesus. Jesus. If you got somebody coming to you that's preaching and teaching something other than Christ Jesus, then you need to turn away from that. Amen. 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 If you got somebody coming to you saying, you know what? Bow down and pray to Mary. Uh -huh. You need to turn away from that. He says right here, he says Christ Jesus. But I love he says not only speak it, but hold fast. Yes, sir. Hold fast. Don't let it go. How can you let this go? I don't know about you, but how many of you is the word of God really good to? Amen. I mean, I mean, how many of you really get excited about the word? You know, I have never seen 
such excitement like I see in that office. I thank God, and I always go back to this because salt and pepper, all right, I'll call them that, all right, Deacon Larry, Elder Tim, now, now, wait a minute now, Elder Tim is pepper. See, y'all already thinking he got to be salt. Why is that? Deacon Larry is salt. So that's why I told him, I said, you miss Pepper while he's gone, don't you? <laughs> I tried to stand in the best I could, but you know, I just couldn't fill the shoes of Elder Tim Turner here. But I see how excited they get in the word when they're in. When I walk in, it's thus saith the Lord. Yes, Lord. When I sit down with them, it's thus saith the Lord. Yes, Lord. And I see the excitement on them, and they, and they go back and forth, and then Elder got this thing about drive-by drop-off of word where he drops something in your lap and he walks off. And you're sitting there like, ooh, that was sound. What am I supposed to do with this? But then what we're supposed to do with it is read it, uh -huh. digest uh -huh. it, uh -huh. meditate on it, pray with it. Notice I say pray with it because if you pray God's word back to him, uh -huh. Uh -huh. he's going to listen. He's going to answer you. But how do you know what sound doctrine to pray back to him if you're not reading it for yourself? Don't go to Jesus saying, yeah, whatever Pastor Thomas said. Ain't about what I say. I can't stand up there with you when I'm standing before Jesus. Everybody going to be standing up there by themselves. You ain't going to have a lawyer right here. You ain't going to have a lawyer right there. But guess what? Right now, while you're here, Jesus is our lawyer. Amen. Jesus is our advocate right now. Amen. But you know what? He's our advocate for what's right and not for no mess. Amen? Amen. Then we see in Titus, the first chapter, ninth verse, while given the character qualities of a bishop. And remember now, bishops are actually pastors too now. Now see, he says right here in Titus 1, 9, he says, holding fast, there it is again. How many times does God repeat himself? He wants to make sure we get it, all right? Holding fast for what? Faithful word as he has been taught, that he may be able by what? Sound doctrine, both to exhort and convict those who contradict. See, it's not sound doctrine if we're contradicting God. Why do we think God is stupid? Every time man tries to add to or take away from God's word, he's literally telling God, you don't know what you're doing. You can't think for yourself. You are not perfect. You are not all knowledgeable and all seeing. And all, so let me help you out. Let me tell you something, God's word, the meat of God's word, does not need you or I putting ketchup on top of it, putting seasonings on, on top of it, doesn't need anything with it, it is fine all by itself. Amen. In the name of Jesus, it is fine, it is sound doctrine all by itself. Thank you, Jesus. Now we got enough problems in life without us trying to add to what's perfect. Yes, but then when you add to it and when you take away, it now becomes imperfect. Because now you're trying to add a little bit of you to it. I don't know about you, but I didn't give my life for you. I wasn't the one that looked at all creation and said, let there be. So who am I to come in here and say, you know what? Let me add a little bit to this. Let me take away. There's a danger in that. I don't want to stand before God and he says, so you're the one that thought I was stupid. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? There's a nice toasty place right over there for you. But Lord, didn't I do this? Yeah, you did all that, but guess what? You did it adding to, you did it taking away, you did it, and it wasn't even signed. Because you got away from the simple things of me. Don't you understand? God's word is simple if we just leave it alone. Amen. Amen. I mean, we have trouble enough as it is comprehending what we're reading. We tell God it's too much. I don't know how to do it. But then we want to add to it. Take away from it. He said, well, if I'm going to read today, let me see. I'm going to read it. Oh, I don't like that. I don't like that portion. Lord, how about if I just added no? <laughs> how many of you know that God's word is perfect? Yes. Amen. Amen. Has any of you ever tried to just lean on God's word for what it says and it's experience its joy? Amen. Experience its Amen. healing? Experience its deliverance? Amen. Experience his strength and his, I mean everything about God's word is right there for the taking if we just leave it alone as far as adding to take it away and digest the way it is. Yes, 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 yes. God's the best cook there is. Amen. 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 
He puts that word of God out there on that plate. I'm like, oh, Lord, this is good. <laughs> and notice when he bring it to your table, there ain't no salt shaker there. There ain't no pepper. There ain't no sugar. There ain't nothing on that table. He says, all you need is a napkin. Amen. That's right. Because it's going to get so good, he's going to cause you to drool a little bit. <laughs> so you need to wipe that mouth sometime a little bit when you're giving me some praise. Yeah. But see, sound doctrine, then, it has an encouraging and uplifting effect, doesn't it? Do we agree to that? Amen. And one of the reasons we find reading, studying, hearing, teaching, and preaching from God's Word so beneficial is that it is encouraging. Sound doctrine is healthy and encourages because it is the truth and it is trustworthy. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now, you know, when, when thinking about encouragement, you know, God always gives me some things to, you know, talk about. And it brought back to me the thought. I was thinking about the Library of Congress and I guess, you know, when I walk in and out of my room and the TV's on and you hear something about Abraham Lincoln, somebody said, you know, God could just give you something, you know. And, and, and I thought about the Library of Congress and, and they had a display that's labeled the contents of the president's pocket on the night of April 14, 1865. Now, we, we know that that was the night that President Abraham Lincoln was assassinated, you know, there in Ford's Theater. And, of course... When he was assassinated, now he didn't just die right then and there, he died the very next day, but there was contents in his pocket. And, and what those contents were uh, that he had, no kidding, these, they are still actually at the Library of Congress today. All of these contents that he had in his pocket, you had a, a, a handkerchief that was embroidered A. Lincoln. You had a country boy's pen knife. You had a spectacle case that was repaired with string that had spectacles in it. You had a wallet containing a $5 bill, which was Confederate money. And then what I want to bring your attention to is the old, worn newspaper clippings. Mm -hmm. Because one of the things that was important about that newspaper clippings, one of the clippings actually tells about a speech by British statesman John Bright. And he says in this statement, he says, President Lincoln is one of the greatest men of all time. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, Many in the world know today that he was telling the truth about President Lincoln. And, but you know, before he was shot back in 1865, a lot of people didn't feel that way about him. Nope. You know, millions, they shared quite a contrary point of view about the president. Now, now just stay with me now. You know, his was a lonely agony that reflected the suffering and the turmoil of a country that was being torn apart by a costly war. And so he had his people coming up against him all the time. People bad-mouthing him all the time, telling him what he wasn't. Does it sound familiar? Mm -hmm. Does people do that today? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Is somebody doing that to you today? Yeah, yeah. Telling you that no matter what you do at your job, no matter what you do in the church, no matter what you do, you ain't nothing, you'll never be nothing, you'll never have nothing. Mm -hmm. But there was times when President Lincoln would pull that clipping out of his pocket and he would read it. And it would give him encouragement because he thought to himself, somebody out there appreciates me for what I'm doing. And think about it. It wasn't even an American. It was somebody from Britain. A British guy that said this about him. But don't you know that your words can go a long way Amen. with somebody? Amen. That's why I shared that story. Sometimes, you know, that shows how we hang on to things mm -hmm. that people will say about us. Mm -hmm. But if I'm coming to you and I'm saying, you know what, I'm coming out of sound doctrine, but I'm putting you down. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about you. And I'm telling you what you never will be in God's house. What you never will be in his service. That's not from sound doctrine. That's not from the Holy Spirit that's on the inside of me. But what I'm supposed to do, like John Bright did with Abraham Lincoln, I'm supposed to be able to go to any one of you and say, you know what? You are a child of God. Amen. Amen. You are Amen. successful in Jesus. Yes, Lord. You are a minister for the kingdom of God. You are a singer for the kingdom of God. You are good at what you do because you serve a great God. I am supposed to go and lift you up. You are supposed to lift me up. And I'm telling you, all that stuff about sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never. Words do hurt. Yes. Yes, and people will tend to hold on to those words for a long time. And then we come up with that. Remember that time. Yeah. 
But I don't want it to be that, remember that time. Uh -huh. I want to be able to say, you know what? Anytime I talk to Brother Thomas, he always encourages me. Amen. Amen. Anytime that I talk to Brother Frank over here, he always, you know we can be split over here. He always encourages yeah. me. I call him that because he's always on the move. Yes, he but he never stops praying for folks. Amen. Every time. And you know, I already know that before I can walk from his presence, he's going to pray for me. I already know that when I go to Elder Tim over here, before I can leave his presence, he's going to pray for me. Yeah. Those are things I remember. That's why me pulling that clipping out of my pocket, and I'm looking at it saying, thank you, Jesus, for blessing me with the friends that I have who do nothing but encourage me every time they see me. That's what, this is. That's what makes a healthy body in Christ. You know, he says, he was encouraged by that. Now, you know, me, I'm a living witness that if you just go to somebody with Jesus, mm -hmm. they're going to be encouraged. Amen. Yes. Amen. I'm going through something today. Thomas, I, I just, you know, just, just want you to just pray for me. Now, what it's going to look like when I go, oh, you do <laughs> <laughs> Pastor, I, I, I'm at, I get a phone call. Pastor, I'm at the hospital. What, now, what would Mother Yvonne think about me if I go... Well, have you already made funeral arrangements yet for uh, what they're about to do to you? That ain't what she want to hear. So what I do, I say, let me pray for you. You know what? I kid around with it, too. I say, now, nah, you must be a doctor out there look like Denzel Washington for you to keep wanting to go back out there like that. Or you must love that terrific food that they serve in our head. I said, you know what? I'm going to pray for you. Because just to hear her laugh, even in the midst of her being in the bed out there laying up, she said, Pastor, I don't want to be out here. You just go ahead and pray for me right now. I know in the name of Jesus. I even heard her on it. <laughs> you talk about sound doctor. Doctor walk up in there. You ain't my doctor. Jesus is my doctor. Amen. But where did she get that from? You know, sometimes I think instead of us drinking a five-hour energy drink, we ought to eat, eat and drink from God's word of everlasting life and faith. Huh? Who oh, he used the title of the day. It wasn't mine, it's Jesus. His word of everlasting life and faith. Ain't that what his word is? Oh, don't get me going right here. Because I mean, what you eat spiritually yes. is what you're going to think spiritually. Yes, no. It's what you're going to feel spiritually. Yes. And then it's what you're going to say spiritually. Yes, no. So if you're eating false doctrine, guess what? Yes. You're going to be talking false doctrine. Yes. Don't come to me with that John 3, 69, for God thought he loved the world that he was feeling like giving some son that who might want to believe in him is going to perish and then still have everlasting life. What are you talking about? Well, that's what the preacher said when I went to church on Sunday. Well, did you read it for yourself? Go find it. Then you gotta go find it. Or I'll help you out. You know, I'll help you look for it. Amen. Then you sit there and read. It and go. That ain't what I just said. Well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> now God's getting it right. Amen. 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 See, in John twelve fifty, the Bible says, "And I know that His command is everlasting life. Therefore, whatever I speak, just as the Father has told me, so I speak." Right. And then in Romans ten eight, the Bible says, "But what does it say?" The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach, right? So if you ever want to know where the name of this ministry came from, I just share with you the two passages of scriptures where God gave me the name for this ministry. Word of everlasting life and faith. If you digest that every day, you will never go hungry. Amen. You will never be spiritually sick. Amen. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Thank you. We're talking about sound doctrine today. Just bear with me. I won't be before you too much longer. Now, false doctrine, hmm. on the other hand, leads to a spiritually unhealthy lifestyle. We know that. We go to 1 Timothy, the first chapter, 8 verse. Now watch this now. I know this is one of Deacon Larry's favorite verses because anytime we talk about the law, his ears go up like, oh, here we go. You know, but praise God. I love that brother back there. He said, 1 Timothy 1, 8, he says, but we know, but we know. that the law is good if one uses it lawfully. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. 
Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous person. Did we hear that? Uh -huh. huh? He said, but for the lawless uh -huh. and insubordinate, uh -huh. remember that word insubordinate, for the ungodly and for sinners, uh -huh. for the unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for fornicators, for sodomites, mm -hmm. for kidnappers, mm -hmm. for liars, mm -hmm. for perjurers. Now watch this. People look at it and go, oh, he didn't mention me. But wait a minute. He says, and if there is any other thing contrary. that is contrary yes, to what? Sound doctrine. doctrine. So God includes it all. Yes, Somebody just thought they got away with something, but then you got to read the whole thing. Yes, it's not sound if you cut it off in half. Read, don't get to the period. That's what I say. And if there's a comma, keep reading till you get to the period. Yes, right? So what I'm trying to tell you is any preacher, any teacher, any evangelist, anybody that is not teaching sound doctrine now falls under this category. Why? Because they are now insubordinate. Insubordinate means that they are now disobedient uh -huh. to authority uh -huh. and defiant to orders. Yes, that means that when God is saying teach sound doctrine, they ain't teaching it. Uh -huh. Now they don't put themselves up under the law because they're being disobedient to God's word. Uh -huh. Did you hear? Amen. So why are some lives spiritually unhealthy? Because the doctrine they have been listening to and feeding on is not true. It's not sound. We cannot maintain good spiritual healthy bodies if we are following false teachings. Amen. And like I said, don't come to me if it's not in God's word. That's right. Don't come to me and say, you know, God. I don't know why they always want to do it. God told me to tell you that as your pastor, you going to pay my mortgage. As your pastor, I want a new car every month. As your pastor, why did you say that? And you're up there doing like this. Somebody better find that real quick because I ain't read that. What are you doing? But he's talking about, and you know, I want somebody to, to, to carry my coat, shine my shoes. To do that. Come on now. We take that double honor thing a little bit too far. Amen. I mean that. And I've told the church before, and I'm going to tell you again, you better go back and read in the spirit. Mm -hmm. Because like I said, if you want double honor, you want to double honor me, I tell you all the time, don't be pray for me. Amen. Amen. Huh? Pray for me. Because that devil always got something he's trying to say, but you know what, I'm not able to his devices and neither are you. But then I say, if you want to honor the man that's up here preaching, whether it be me, Minister Swayze, Minister Cole, with me. And the elders, y'all going to be getting up here too now. Y'all don't think y'all done got away from something. Y'all going to be getting up here too. You know the way you honor us? Adhere to God's word. Amen. Amen. Trust in his word. Yes. Live his word. Yes. About his word. Yes, no. Speak his word. Yes. Live his word. Yes. Love his word. Yes. That's how you show the ministers in this place on. Amen. That's Amen. what I say. Amen. And I hope somebody ain't sitting there going, dog, there go my bank account. <laughs> no. God will supply your every oh, need. Yes, All you got to do is teach a sound doctrine and he'll give you what you need when you need it. Every time. Amen. Thank and you know, in 1st, 2nd Timothy 4th, chapter 3rd, verse, we understand now why there are people falling for these false doctrines. Jesus said, He said, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Mm -hmm. We're in that time, y'all. Yes, he said, But according to their own desire. Because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. Mm -hmm. right. So they'll look at anybody and go, you can be my teacher today. Because you'd be out there partying with me. So you could teach me how to do that dance and stuff you was doing the other day and all that. You be a, Didn't you say that in the Word it says I can do this? But notice when people ask that, you don't come up with no scripture. No. I mean, I've been in places where I, somebody said they heard and, and they read and they did all that. And I'm still sitting there about to fall off my seat waiting to write down the scripture so I can hear it, so I can read it, so I can adhere to it. And I don't hear nothing. Y'all been there. That's right. You know what I'm talking about. And I heard that. Uh, my. Then they, then they get crazy to go, my God. I'm like, who is your God? I heard my God say, 
Women, you don't have to take orders from your husbands. You don't have to submit to your husbands. Mm -hmm. Husbands, you don't have to love your wives. I'll be like, oh, what is all that? Ain't got people out there, amen, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, and not even listening and not even reading for yourself. See, but then they jumping for joy. You want to know how you can make an arena sit down real quick? It's when the man go, and then ha, I know the word says that every soul in this place is going to give me $10,000. But right now, all of a sudden the place is going, <laughs> <laughs> now they going to look. Say that. Say that. I can deal with not loving my wife and you know and all the way to say the ten now. Now you want to search. The struck a nerve. See, that's why you gotta look. Sound doctrine, folks. Amen. Sound Amen. doctrine. Amen. Amen. That's why, you know what? Now, praise be to God. And I, and I humbly say this. I could probably quote scriptures with the best of them. I mean, I'm just saying Amen. humbly. I could probably, Amen. but you know what? God puts on my heart. Put it up there for them to see. Yes, Lord. Yes, Let Lord. them read it word for word. Yes, because you know, anytime. And I'm sitting like, and I'm talking like, what did he just say? Did you hear that? I don't know, don't go by me. I'm in my mood now. I'm in, oh glory, hallelujah. I mean, did somebody hear what he just said? Well, he gave one passage of scripture that was at the beginning, and I don't even know where that came from. <laughs> well, y'all know where these come from. You know what? Anybody need a pen to keep writing? Keep writing. Something else that I have asked God to allow me to do is I said I want to, in our website, I'm going to put another link in there and I'm going to start putting these sermons that I've preached in there. That way you guys can go on in there, you can print them out, you can read them, whatever, see them, write them, whatever. Amen. But, but praise be to God. It ain't just for me. Mm. Amen. Amen. And if God gives you something to expound upon, then praise be to God. But you know what? False teaching will get us into trouble. It's that false teaching today. Bear with me now. It's that false teaching today that tells us that there is no hell. There's that false teaching today that even tells people heaven doesn't exist. But why do we got some people that want to believe in heaven, but not believe in hell? Yeah. If God's word says it, it's got to be real, right? And then I would try to tell people, listen, you always talking about Jesus just make up stories in here just so he can talk to the Sadducees. And wait a minute now, do you understand what a made up story is? When you make up something that is not real and not true, what are you doing? You're lying. Mm, I just made it up. Well, that means it wasn't true. Right? Yeah. So if Jesus is just making up stories to prove a point, then he's lying. Did you hear what I said? Yeah. But you know what? First of all, the 1 Corinthians 6 and 9, this is sound doctrine here. Why are we telling people that some people will not inherit the kingdom of God? But then they come back and go, no, everybody's going to inherit the kingdom because there is no hell. Because God loves us too much to where he won't even send nobody to hell. Well, I want everybody to read 1 Corinthians 6, 9 with me. I'm going to read it with me here. It says, do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Stop right there. Now, we all want everybody to be saved. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We do. We do. I do. But God is letting us know, look, if you want to live an unrighteous life, mm -hmm. guess what? You ain't coming into my house. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. I just got my carpet clean up here. I ain't bringing you up in here. He says, do not be deceived. Now, here we go. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites. Next verse. Next verse, verse 10. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. But now go to the 11th verse. I want to show you something here. The first, right here, the first of those first six words right there. And such were some. Some. He didn't say, and such were all. Mm -hmm. He said, some. Why is that some there? Mm -hmm. Because everybody ain't going to get it. He said, and such were some of you. Mm -hmm. Now that's Jesus talking. I'm not adding to. I'm not taking away. Some. He says, but you were washed. Those of us who got it. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. But you were sanctified. Mm -hmm. But you were justified in Amen. the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. 
When did that process happen? When you said, Jesus, come into my life and save me. Jesus, come into my life and cleanse me and heal me, forgive me. Now, we want everybody to do that. That should be your desire, the love of Christ in you. You don't want anybody to perish. But unfortunately, some have taken that journey already. Luke 16, 22. Like I said, bear with me here for a moment. Luke 16, 22. Everybody read this with me. Now, I want you to read it with me. So, now, now, we're talking about Lazarus here. Everybody knows the story about Lazarus the rich man. So it was that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. Right? Carried to heaven. Now, like I said, Jesus just don't make stories up just to try and prove a point. He's telling the truth. These are true occurrences, true accounts. He says, the rich man died, then also died, and was buried. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, next verse. Luke 16, 23. And being in torments in Hades, now another translation that just straight up says hell. Mm -hmm. He lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off. And Lazarus in his bosom. Now wait a minute now. This dude went to hell. Now I didn't make that up. I ain't trying to scare nobody. But Jesus says it does exist. Right? Because that dude right there did not conform to what he was talking about in 1 Corinthians 6 chapter 9 through the 11 verse. He refused to be washed, he refused to be sanctified and justified, right? Mm -hmm. But I mean, because he was living a life where he fell into some of these unrighteous categories, he could not inherit the kingdom of God. Uh -huh. That's not me making that up. I'm trying to tell you guys, if hell wasn't real, everybody pack up your Bibles, just go home. That's right. Just go home. Let's shut down the office. Let's shut down the church. I'll call Olympia and tell them to tear up the church license. The incorporation letter, the 501c3, all that good stuff, it's done. We don't need it. Because if there's no hell, we can go out and live any way we want. False doctrine, true doctrine, some doctrine. We can do whatever we want because when we die, we ain't going to a place that don't exist. Something what I'm saying is, why did Jesus get up on the cross? Oh, he just felt like it. Yeah, right. Yeah. Felt like getting beat like he did and tortured like he did and spit upon, crown of thorns. You ain't putting no two-inch crown of thorns up in my head. If hell don't exist, why did I even have to come down from the throne onto this earth if hell didn't exist? Somebody yeah. better watch out what they're saying. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. See, we get into a big danger when we, I mean, you know, we let our desires, even me, you know, I let my desire go. I say, Lord, I, I just don't, I just don't want to believe it. He said, but what does my word say? Yeah. What does my sound doctrine say? Yeah, sound doctrine. Unfortunately, there are going to be some folks that are still going to go there. He said, and such were some of you. Some people around here, I've known people who have literally said when I was in the Navy, I ain't never going to church. I ain't never trusting in Jesus. I ain't never calling on Jesus because it ain't real. He ain't real. Heaven ain't real. It's just a made up story. And all you can do when people say stuff like that is pray for pray them and say, Lord, I pray that sometime down the line, before it's too late, they realize the error of their way. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Show them, Lord, that you are real. In, in Titus, the first chapter, 10th verse. The Bible says, for there are many insubordinate, both idle talkers and deceivers, especially those of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped. These people of circumcision are always thinking that you've got to fall under their traditions and all this in order for you to obtain what they call salvation. Mm -hmm. But it says, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole households, teaching things which they ought not for the sake of dishonest gain. Haven't we seen that today? Uh -huh. Isn't that out here today? It wasn't just back then, it's right now. But then he goes right here. One of them, a prophet, now watch this now, a prophet of their own said, and they're talking about the Cretan poet, uh, Epitomites. This dude, here he is, he's going to talk about his own people. He says, Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, lazy gluttons. Mm. Huh? And then look what Paul says in the next verse. He goes, this testimony is true. 
He says, therefore rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith. Now, if this dude can talk about his own people, uh -huh. you know, what do you think the world is doing to you? Oh, yeah. Here this false doctrine is going on out here, and everybody thinks they're in the right thing. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But you know what's going on behind their backs? They're getting talked about. They're getting dogged out. And all along, your money's going to that false doctrine. And they sitting behind closed doors going, suckers. Yeah. Woo, dishonest game. Here we go. Got my mansion. Got this. Got don't give me a mansion. Mm -hmm. Didn't you hear Hannah, Sister Hannah sing that song? Amen. Huh? Don't give me a mansion on top of the hill. My mansion's up in heaven. Amen. I'm going to stand on this side of God. I'm going to stand on this side of God. Huh? You see, we, we, we look at all this now. Now, he says right here, what he says, therefore rebuke them sharply, mm -hmm. that they may be sound in the faith. They think when you rebuke them that you're being mean. So no, it's because you love them. Amen. Amen. Don't come at me with this kind of stuff. Look, you're out of order. I, out of love, I got to tell you this. You're out of order. Amen. Amen. And if you're going to sit here and get mad at me, well, don't get mad at me. Get mad at the sound doctrine. Get mad at who wrote the sound Amen. doctrine. Amen. Get mad at who spoke the sound yeah. doctrine, who keeps speaking it. Mm -hmm. Get mad at Jesus. No, 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 we won't have any of that. It's more convenient for me just to be mad at you. <laughs> okay, well, still, you're being mad at what's in me then. Yeah. Amen? Amen? You know, sound doctrine, sound faith, mm -hmm. all this is predicated on communication. If we are not communicating this, mm. what good is it? If you're keeping it all bottled up to yourself, uh -huh. what good is it? Mm. No good. What good is it? Why call yourself a minister? Why call yourself an elder? Why call yourself a minister? You a minister, elders, all that. And you're just like, you know what? I don't want nobody getting mad at me. I think I'll just, just join in with everybody else. No! Time to speak the truth, Trey. Amen. Time to speak the truth. Amen. Everybody sitting there getting on me talking about, oh, oh. Oh, he, he came over here and he, he, he embarrassed me. He told the truth. He, <laughs> well, then, no, out of love. Mm -hmm. Out of love. If I keep this all to myself, what good am I? Mm. God's going to hold me accountable for that. How many people has he brought to every one of your lives? And you, for you people that are not ordained ministers, guess what? You're still ordained. Amen. Huh? Mm -hmm. You still have a duty in the name of Jesus to go out and preach the word. To tell people about the good news of the gospel. You ain't got to sit there and sound all fancy. Just go out there and say, don't you know Jesus loves you? Don't you know he wants to save you? He saved me. Look what he brought me from. Mm -hmm. All of us have that. Don't let the devil tell you, that's the pastor's job. That's the minister's job. Sound doctrine is for everybody. If we're all supposed to read it, we're also all supposed to teach it. Amen. And preach it. Amen. And witness it to a dying world. Amen? Amen. Don't sit here thinking, oh, man, I'm safe because I go to church every Sunday. You know what? Oh, no. I, I, let me just say that, please, nobody take offense to this, but the devil goes to church every Sunday, too. Yes, he do. That's right. He'll come in there and play the keyboards. He'll come in there and be on the drums. He'll sit right there next to him, praise the hey, yeah, you know, and have you go there doing something you shouldn't be doing. And then all of a sudden, he'll be right up there with the preacher. Yes. And he'll come right up there and go, let, let me turn this for you. Go ahead on. But that's when you got to get behind me in the name of Jesus right now. In Jesus' name, I come here today to talk about sound doctrine, the word of God. So if I start going all off about a half hour on some fishing story or something like that, please somebody throw a Bible at me. <laughs> We didn't come here to hear what happened to you in the alley or somewhere down the line or whatever. No, you can't even hear the word. Amen? Amen. 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 But let me say this. Communication. Let me, let me just tell you this story. Back in the 90s, I don't know how many of you remember this, and we're going to bring this to a close. Uh, NASA had came out with this Mars probe. I think you all heard about it. it was this, this Mars satellite probe. It's supposed to be this first one to go into Mars orbit and take pictures. I don't know what this association, this thing is about Mars or whatever, but they just want to get up there for some reason. People got their name on the list now to take a space shuttle to Mars or something like that. You go. You go to Mars. I'm staying right here. Right? But, but this orbiter 
You had the engineering team. One team was giving out metric units. The other team was giving out English units, trying to get the coordinates to get this satellite into its proper orbit around Mars. But because one place was saying one thing and the other place was saying another thing and they weren't on the same page, this orbiter ended up going into Mars's atmosphere, blowing up, exploding, and on a day when these engineers were supposed to be celebrating the fact that they have a satellite now in Mars's orbit, 20, $125 million went down the drain. I don't know about you, but $25 in my household is a lot of money. And to blow $125 million because there was no communication between the two. You had the Lockheed Martin Center for NASA in Colorado not communicating with the navigational team in California. And because of this, they just blew you, your taxpayer money, of $125 million. So then they had the meeting of the minds. They got together so that they figured out, okay, we got to get on the same page. We got, if we're going to use metric units, let's use metric units. If we're going to use English units, let's use English units. But from that point on, there was no miscommunication. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I share with you that story is that we, church, got to get on the same page. Amen. Amen. We've got to get on Amen. the same page. If God is telling us to use his metric system, that's what we use. Amen. If he's telling us to use his English system, that's what we use. Yes, Lord. But we have to be on the same page with Almighty God. Amen. Because if not, then something's going to blow up. Yes. Something is going to burn. But guess what? It ain't going to be me. Gonna be me. <laughs> See, this is what a healthy body is made of in Christ. Amen. Communication. We got sound doctrine, we got sound faith, and now, number three, we need sound speech. Sound speech. Let me just dab on this just for a few minutes here. You know, as a young man himself, part of what Pastor Titus was told to do was communicate sound speech to his congregation. As ministers of the gospel of Christ, this is what we're to do. Communicate sound doctrine to the community, to, to the congregation. Mm -hmm. Why? Because what you hear in here is what you're going to go out there and talk about. Right? Yes, so what I would like for you to do is leave here and say, you know what? Thus saith the Lord. Saith the Lord. the yes. word of God says. Yes. The word of God tells me to. Yes, the word of God tells me what not to do. Yes. Not, you know what? If that dude in there, sister or brother so-and-so would do it, I guess I can do it. Okay, well, you go follow sister brother so-and-so into the pit of hell. I mean, that's your choice. Mm -hmm. Me, I'm following Jesus. Jesus, amen. Amen? amen. I'm following Jesus. So amen. how can I tell if my spiritual health is good? Yes. How? So what you got to ask yourself is, well, if you want to tell, the question is, how are you talking? Mm -hmm. Hmm? Mm -hmm. How are you talking? Mm -hmm. See, I would rather you come up to me like yesterday. I knew when I ran into Sister Emma, I was going to get some kind of Jesus out of her. <laughs> you know, praise God, how you doing? Some kind of encouraging word. Mm -hmm. yeah. But look, if I'm already down and I'm out and something bugging me, the last thing I want any of you to do is go, oh, you hopeless. Oh, wow. <laughs> you hopeless. Yeah, I know you read the Bible and you go to church and all that stuff. You know, See, that's why sometimes I choose not to go. Because my word tells me, oh, now it's your word. Mm. Well, no, it tells me I ain't got to go all the time. I can have church right in my kitchen. Okay? And I don't want to fellowship with nobody because everybody's the devil. So you know what I say to people? When they come at me with some stuff like that, all I do is say three words. Book, chapter, chapter verse. Mm. Just show me where it says it in the Word. And wherever, you know, if you show me, I'll repent. And, hey, I won't come to church every Sunday. I won't come to Bible studies. I won't read. I won't even study no more. I won't even sing praise. Look, I'll go back and break out Motown again. I'll start listening to the Temptations. You got a name for a group, Temptations. Man, we be tempted around here. They're going to name somebody. I'll be getting down with, oh, forget praise songs. I'm going to go live the way I want to live. But I'm not. Amen. Because of sound doctrine. Mm -hmm. Huh? Sound doctrine. Now look what he says. We're going to end it right here. James 1.19. He says, so then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear. Slow to speak. Slow to speak. 
slow to wrath. Huh? Swift to hear what? Sound doctrine. Slow to speak what? False doctrine. Mm -hmm. Slow to wrath. Don't you think? How many of you know false doctrine just make you mad? Amen. False doctrine, but it make you mad at the wrong people. Mm -hmm. False doctrine. Go hate your brother. Go hate this. Go hate that. You know, the last thing, look. If I ever stand before you and say, you know what? And I dare hold this perfect word of God and says, God's word says there will be no fat women in the church. Okay. Get your life. Don't you start. Uh, shot, 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 shot. <laughs> huh? <laughs> now where did that come from? <laughs> That's a false doctrine, right? God's word says you shall not have white people in the same place with black people. Where's that say? And you got people, amen, glory, hallelujah, yeah. Oh, yes. Get some junk. Mm. Heavy set people. White people. Black people. They don't even know why they're jumping. It just sounded good. But it didn't come from God's word. Right. I want every man in here uh, to go uh, to the strip club uh, and I want you to watch the ladies uh, pole dance. Uh, let them get down uh, so that you can appreciate your wife uh, a little bit better. No, uh, Papa. And y'all be saying, you know, you're going to be like, Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I'm just a message. <laughs> what I'm trying to tell you, church, is that it's out there. Yeah, it's, it's out there. 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 You've got people saying these things. Yeah. But they don't come forward with no scriptures. That's right. But you see, that's why Jesus says, so then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear. Right. Not that garbage, but sound doctrine. Right. So instead of saying stupid stuff, I said stupid, that's right. Instead of saying stupid stuff like that, I'll come to you and say, everybody's welcomed in God's church. Hey, hey, hey. No matter if you're skinny, fat, black, white, red, yellow, white, everybody is welcome. Hey, hey, hey. And you know what? Stay away from the strip club. Yeah. Love your wife. Hey, Why submit yourself to your own husband? Hey, hey. No, he said, I don't own. That sound not true. Ooh, Jesus, you don't need nothing else. Own. So, what have we learned today? Sound doctrine. Do I listen to it and do I follow it? Mm -hmm. Sound faith. Is my life producing the kind of works that Jesus wants it to produce? Sound speech. Am I talking the way Jesus wants me to talk? Amen. And let me tell you something. Remember this, church. We can always find what we need to maintain and improve our spiritual health mm -hmm. if we just tap into God's GNC store, <laughs> God's nutritional center. Amen. 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 Give God some praise. Amen.